if every step you take is in the right direction, it doesn't matter how big or little that step is. Tandy is a livestock guardian dog. She's a Portuguese breed, an Estrella, and she takes her livestock guardian duties very, very seriously. <clears throat> so, um, yes. You take it very seriously. What are you seeing now? So she keeps watch all the time. And she is actually, um, oh, about a week ago now, um, it had actually been sort of building up when, if I'd go and sleep at um, 10 at night, it was getting difficult to get her to come back inside. So she started off as a small puppy. When I first got her, she used to sleep in the bed with me. When I moved into the cottage, she slept on the, on the couch. And she started wanting to rather be outside and I suppose patrol the farm, keep a watch on the farm. And, um, yeah, as I said, just over a week ago, she was um, just slowly s s starting to get more and more difficult to get back inside. At night, she'd rather want to sleep outside. So for the last week, she's been sleeping outside. And as a result, we no longer hear foxes screaming in the middle of the night, which... We had been hearing, and um, I will now hear her if there's any movement or whatever at night. She will bark and chase whatever is coming around away. So we are coming close to the 15th of March, which is land clearing deadline. And so we're going to be going around the farm looking for dead branches like this to um, put in one place. Um, my neighbors are going to be getting a wood chipper and they said... Um, we can borrow that, so I will be looking to see when we collect um, the old dead branches and that around the farm. We'll be looking to see what can be used from it as firewood and what we will put through the wood chipper to create um, mulch and that for the farm. But it will be a shame to take down all of this um, because you got to sort of clear around the house uh, it's about 50 meters um, around the house and the bees are just so active in all of this that to take it down is going to be a bit of a shame
appears to have found something under here. She's been digging like mad. What have you found? Look at your nose. Look at that nose, all covered in sand. But you can see the plastic is doing a good job over here. Um, killing all the weeds. So it's going to be easy to dig this up. I think we need to train Tundi to um, dig the whole field. That would be great. So every now and then, probably once every two weeks, Tundi has a day of making wrong choices. So she made the choice to dig out some of the tomatoes here. She made the choice to dig out that tomato, dig in here, and I've tried to replant the cabbage. Hopefully it will take. Um, she made the wrong choice to uh, pull out my speck boom over there. And she made a wrong choice to pull out one of my raspberry canes. You can see I now just have an empty pot. And she made a wrong choice to completely decimate and destroy two little uh, uh, bay trees just so that she could get the pots to chew on. So yesterday was not a good day for making good choices. As you can see, the whole area here is absolutely littered with pieces of plastic and things that she, that we've been using for building that she'll grab and chew on or like some of my uh, like Tupperware containers because my kitchen is open plan she has removed them out of the cupboards because the cupboards don't have doors and you can see what has happened to some of my containers so she's got lots to play with and already chew on so removing plants from the pots so that she can get a hold of the pots is not a very good choice. So she was in the dog box yesterday. But today is a new day so hopefully she will be a good dog today. With fire season fast approaching, it's time to start going around the land and collecting some of the dead branches and um, I don't have a, a tractor or so Matilda is going to have to just be used for dead branches at the moment so I'm just starting at the entrance and making my way up There's such a lot to do, but I reckon if I just um, do some each day, I think my back might only be able to handle a bit each day. But look at all of this. There's a lot that's got to get moved. Are you king of the rock again, Tandy? King of the rock.
Right, so the next pig house in the next pen is taking shape. Julian has very cleverly used the rock face as it actually looks like it's been flattened with something, the rock, you know, like chiseled smooth. Tandy's checking it out to see that it's okay for pigs. So this is nice. We'll once we finished with the fencing, we can put some straw in here and this will be nice and cozy, another hideaway for pigs. Great job, Julian. Thank you. Did that meet with your approval, Tandy? Was that good? Hmm? Not too much sun today and it's been like the weather's been a bit overcast the last couple of days and uh, so I'm not sure how much power the solar is getting from the little bit of sun that we are getting but um, decided to just run the generator for a couple of hours just to give it a bit of a boost because seeing that rain is forecast for the next week. So I'm just going to come and turn the generator off now. Right, it's time to plant out. Oops, wait, what is this? The broccoli, the Calabri Green Sprouting Broccoli. As you can see, it's grown almost to the top. And it's time to open it up and plant into one of my cardboard box raised bed gardens just taken it out of the plastic bottle look at all the root action at the bottom here they're definitely ready to be transplanted right i now have uh, two boxes filled with the calabrese green sprouting broccoli I'm going to see if there's something else I can plant out that's got quite big within these this um, winter sowing method that I can plant into these other, I've still got another four boxes I can plant things in. So the spinach is also doing quite well so I think I'm going to plant out this Bloomsdale long-standing spinach. Once again, look at all the root development here of this Bloomsdale long-standing spinach. Spinach has been planted out. It is so satisfying to have grown this from seed and transplanting it out. Hopefully they survive being transplanted. Next thing I'll be planting out will be the golden acre cabbage. It's also growing really well. I'm really pleased with how the winter sowing has come out. Look at these cabbages. Golden acre cabbage is in and I'm going to now do the butter crunch lettuce. Butter crunch lettuce is in. We had really, really heavy rain during the night. It's still raining now. And look, my IBC tank is full. I need to get some more IBC tanks. I'm just walking along and I'm seeing these really ugly caterpillars over here. I don't know what these are. It's just like a whole ball of them moving around. Three strands of barbed wire along here. Yeah, I really like these. I don't know what they are, but I've, yeah, got, they... a, I've got a nice big one just come up. On yeah. Uh, so this up. rain we've had has made like Everything go crazy, yeah. But 
this is where I had had the grass before which is now being dug up and is ready for planting over here you can barely see the you can barely see the grapevines over here now with all the flowers and that that have come up so we are now putting up we're going to put we've got the fence posts up we're going to put um, just three strands of barbed wire on and this is to be able to keep when the sheep move um, when the shepherd moves them through that land over there to get to that side there where he takes them for grazing that they won't come onto this field and eat the vegetables so that's what we're busy doing at the moment you know life is life so some days things get in the way and that day's steps might be smaller than another day's steps and that's okay it all evens out eventually Chris of course walked right in front of the food as I was th throwing some out so what I do is I sprinkle it out so that they each can get to the food but what I want to show you is look how broad Chris's shoulders are so if you look at him at the back end look at his shoulders how broad they are can you imagine trying to stop him from going somewhere that he was putting his mind to going with shoulders like that Olympic swimmers shoulders Chad Leclerc or Michael Phelps's shoulders that's what he's got yep time to do some potato planting a slight break in the rain today it's still a little bit of a drizzle but um, I'm going to go and I've got a bucket of all my potatoes out of potato chitlings and uh, going to go and put them in the ground. It is beautiful to see uh, the trees slowly start to come alive again after turning into sticks I'm not too sure if everything mind you that looks like it might come back some things look more alive than others but it just seems to each come at its own time I think yeah you can see little buds starting to come on even the trees that were looking a bit dead this one's got some flowers too typical I just get here and the rain starts again Dundee's desperate to <laughs> dig up something over there and um, let me just show you some of the grapevines that I had planted they're starting to get um, and if you can see signs of life coming on these grapevines which is good so this is a very rudimentary sort of fence it's not going to necessarily stop the sheep from coming in to my vegetables but it's more as a sign for the shepherd not to let the sheep come into here but we will put um, more strands of wire up this was just the start okay right let me see how many potatoes I can put into the ground in the rain.
I might be looking a little bit like a drowned rat. <laughs> Time to go and have some coffee, I think. You look like a drowned rat, hey, Tundi? She's such a loyal dog that even though it's raining, that, yeah, even though it's raining, Tandy is still with me planting potatoes. I got back just in time. Rain is really coming down now. I'm loving the rain. We need it so badly, so I'm not complaining about the rain at all. So I did uh, washing a couple of days ago, which I'm trying desperately to dry inside because it's been raining. Um, and my <laughs> clothes horse has collapsed, so it's got to be balanced against a couch and chairs at the moment to try and see if I can get washing dry. I don't know how that's going to happen. I have this book called uh, Small Scale Outdoor Pig Breeding by... Wendy Scudamore, I'll give you the link to it. You can get it on Amazon in the description below. And I am busy reading up about hogging and mating at the moment. And um, I was given this handy calendar that you can use to work out when uh, pigs are due. So... Um, it's not, you don't always see them being mated. Like this week, I did see apple pie being mated. Uh, so where are we now in January, February, March? So I saw apple pie being mated on the 10th of March. So that means if she took, she would be due on the 3rd of July. So <clears throat> the thing is we never saw Coco Pop being mated but I'm thinking if she was mated when I was away in America she would be due about actually not March she was mated while I was in America she would be due any time from the 11th until about the 25th of April so it might still be a month out so I'll just keep watching her carefully but she might still have a month to go if she was mated when I was away in December but this is a handy guide. Pigs are, are pregnant, they say, for three months, three weeks, three days, which works out to 116 days. And this calendar just works it all out for you. I'd like to thank all the amazing people who have bought fence posts. It is absolutely, I don't know. At a loss for words almost to thank you for your generosity um, because fencing this farm is a huge endeavor and quite a big cost and the aim is to eventually have the whole farm fenced in so that if the pigs do escape they're not going to wander onto anybody's properties and risk being shot. <laughs> so thank you so much and a big thank you to Wendy for your generous PayPal donation. So thank you, all of you. I love you all. And the pigs love you an incredible amount. 
as you can see, even when it's raining, work still continues on a farm. Things still have to be done. Animals still have to be fed. And you just try and fit things in between the rain. If you can give this video a thumbs up, that will be brilliant. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And in the meantime, keep safe, keep sane, keep dry if it's raining, and I'll see you in the next video. These flowers are just alive with bees. I don't know if you can hear them, just listen.